What's up everyone, welcome to Kai's channel. Today we'll be reviewing this, the Metal Builds Gundam Formula 91 Chronicle White's version. Now as most of you might know that they actually released it, the F91, approximately 4 years ago in 2017. Now this Chronicle White version is basically the F91 that they released back then and also the MSV option set bundled together to give you this. So without wasting any more time, let's check it out. So before we unbox this, let's quickly go through the box because we have a very different looking box here that's not usually seen. As you can see right now, you have the F91 face on the side and then the background you have the line art. But this is actually just the cover for the box. Now you uncovered it, so when you remove the cover, what you see here is basically a very familiar design which is basically the product itself standing right there with the big metal build words right there. And as for the back, both of them are relatively the same and still showing how you can put it as the normal F91 and also the MSV91. But apart from that, one has the line art and the other one doesn't, and that's it. So not quite sure why they actually need another cover to cover the original box. It's not like it's a limited edition like the Tamashii Nation Special where you have the box to cover to identify them. Alright enough with the box, let's unbox this. So coming right out of the box is the first layer. Now this first layer is actually the accessories for the original F91. As you can see from the top right corner, you have all the two beam saber handles, followed by its beam effect right there on its left. Underneath the handles, you have is the non-transformable head of the F91. And then to its left, you have is the beam rifle. Underneath that, you have the different sets of hands that you can change into. And at the bottom, you have a stiff beam shield. Now standing at the center, you have are the two Vesper that goes to the back. And lastly, we have a stiff beam launcher right there on the left. And that's it with the first layer. And here is the second layer, which is basically all the MSV option set. Starting from the top, you have are the missile launchers. And underneath that are the two shoulder armor that you can interchange on the F91. Underneath that right in the center are the two beam gatlings. And then on its side, both on the left and right, you have the four different Vesper. And then at the bottom of the beam gatling, you have is the backpack that holds everything together. And finally, next to that, you have the two caps that covers the joints on the F91. And that's it with the second layer. And here is the last layer of the accessories, which is basically the display stand. You have the supporting arm on the top, and then the base of the display stand right there at the bottom. And that's it. And finally, it's the styrofoam case that holds the main body. As you can see on the top right, it's the two antennas, and then on its left, it's the backpack. On the bottom left, you have the two beam shield that's inactivated, and then on its right side are these two transparent joints that would be for the display stand. So let's put them together and check it out. So here it is, the F91 in its basic equipment. Now the color scheme, just like its previous version, it's actually mainly all white and also in blue, as you can see on the chest piece and also the Vesper on the back. Now as for the white, if you take a closer look, it's actually not the pure white color as the Bandai official website show it is, but instead it's actually a yellowish color which actually looks more like a light sand color if you ask me. Now you might not be able to tell from my video it's because I have three white spotlights shining onto it as well as the camera's auto white balance probably fixed it a little bit. But in real life it's actually a lot more worse than as you see it. But aside from this yellowish white color that takes up the majority of the white, they actually did put in some of the parts that it is with pure white color. So basically you have two tones of white, the yellowish white and also a pure white. 
and you can see an example of this is that the side of the waist those two covers are pure white as well as the top and bottom of the vesper at the back and the layer dividing the thruster on the backpack and lastly it's the thruster panels on the back of the legs those are all pure white and when you compare the two between them it makes them very very awkward and looks really out of place so so far i'm not liking this white at all as for the blue it's actually a matte blue color totally different from what we have seen before which is a metallic blue and also the antenna is actually matte color which is very surprising that they went with this decision now the only metallic color that i've noticed is that the gold on the chest piece and the silver on the arms and also the legs as well as the eyes and the green sensor panel on the top of the head those are metallic color but aside from that none of those are metallic color which i think it's a little bit lacking on this aspect now aside from the coloring they actually added these red decals lines and wording onto it to make this piece a little more detailed but aside from the decals line the rest of the decals are pretty much as i remember it previously as for the movement the head can turn left and right but only to this amount and then it can also tilt up and down like this as for the hands obviously you can turn it's a little tight but it's there Just be warned that when turning, always turn with the shoulder to armor. And then you can go on the side. And you can actually move independently without moving the shoulder. But always open that flap, otherwise it's going to clash into it and then you might scrape off some paint. As for the elbow, there's two joints, so you can actually turn it all the way up to the shoulder. As you can see right now. As for the legs, obviously the thigh can move. As you can see, it can go pretty up high. But as from the back, the thigh can only move all the way up to this point. The legs can also move to the side, all the way like this. Which is also pretty high. And as for the knees, you can bend all the way to the back touching the thigh so not sure if you can see it but there's actually this bronze like wire that's actually within the knee section when you bend it which looks really really detailed and I don't recall seeing this on the original one and finally it's the feet you can point this down and also upward on the toes and then you can turn it slightly at its angle but that's about it so as you can see while i'm demonstrating you can actually notice that the overall joints on all the parts are actually very very tight so you don't have to be worried that this is going to be loose anytime soon unless you play around with it a lot so that's it with the movement let's check out the gimmicks now as for the gimmicks since this is actually a re-release of the original, I'm not going to go into too much details on it but only will cover the major gimmicks that there is. If you want to see all the gimmicks in details, please go to my original F91 review and you can see all about it. So first and foremost is the actually heat fins that's within the shoulder armor. Now you can do that by pressing this top part and push it out and then it will stick out a little bit revealing the tip of the fins and then you can move them down and pull them out now after pulling them out there's actually three panels that you can move and all three of them can actually go on a pretty wide angle 
all the way down to the arms. Just like this. As for the waist itself, on the left side of the waist, it actually stores the two beam saber handles and both of these beam units can be detached. And on the right, it stores the beam shield unit, which is the same one that's attached on its left arm. And for the one on the arms, you can actually replace it with the one that with the beam shield effect expanded. So as for the Vesper, all you need to do is slide down according to that silver rail next to the shoulder. Just make sure it doesn't bump into any other piece to scratch it. Just like that. Now the Vesper actually can extend as well. Now what you need to do is hold on to the Vesper like right here. And also the point of connection right here. Make sure you slide that backwards like this. And technically the back should open up. Revealing the inside. And also you can pull that the front part out to extend it. Just like that. And final gimmicks, it's of course my favorite, the head. Now the head, you can actually do this transformation without interchanging any parts. How you do it is to open up the two side pieces. Like this. And then at the top, there is the piece right here, that's back of the antenna. And if you pull this part up, it transforms. And then close it up. And there you have it. Which is the best gimmicks I like about the F91. Now in order to transform it back, you just have to do the reverse with only a little bit more steps. Again, open it up. Press the top part downwards and the mouthpiece already comes back. Push the mouthpiece together and push the side piece of the head back together. And that's it. Now as I recall on the original one for the transformation bull head, the one with the mouthpiece, there's actually a big gap in between the two mouthpieces which is very very annoying. But here, they seem to have improved on that and as you can see, it's very very thin and it's not as apparent. So it seems like they have fixed this. But if you actually don't even like that small thin lines as you can see right now, there is actually a non transformable head that you can replace this with. So that's it with the original F91 gimmicks. Let's move on to the MSV option set. So here you have is the option set. As you can see right now, the coloring is exactly the same as the F91 main body where it's actually a yellowish white. But you can actually see there are actually metallic colors here on the black and also on the tips of the Vesper. And as for the backpack, there's also the metallic color that's nicely done on that. And also I've noticed there's actually on the connector of the Vesper, it's actually metal, which is one of the rare components on this entire F91, I must say. So let's put them all together and check it out. So for the twin Vesper backpack, all four of the Vesper can actually move at the connecting joints. As you can see, right here, the joints connecting to the backpack, this one can turn. And also, this can be flipped up and down on this joint, as well as the connecting side on the Vesper, this can turn as well to 180. And the Vesper itself, this part can turn as well. So it's very flexible and all four of it can do the same. 
Now the gimmicks for the Vesper is that the smaller one, the ones on the two sides, this one, you can actually pull it out to extend it. And also there's this little handle that you can flip out like this. And as for the two longer ones on the top, you can pull this out. And this little scope can be pulled out like this. And then at the back, you can pull this out and then slide it backwards. So the final form will be like this. So here is the Twin Vesper Type. Now the Twin Vesper Type has actually two official modes. One as you can see right now is that you have the two long Vesper on the top over the shoulder and two short ones on the side of the waist. And the two on the waist, you can actually have the handles being held on the hands of the F91. The second form is that you can have all four Vesper, all of them all over the shoulder, just like you see right now. But of course, just as I mentioned before, the Vesper backpack, all the joints are very flexible so you don't have to display it the official way and you can actually do it any way up to your preference. So it's very flexible here. So enough of the Vesper type, let's move on to the power type. Now in order to put the MSV shoulder piece, we must first remove the whole entire arms in order to do that. And as you can see right now, I removed the head deliberately because I don't want to break another antenna that I did just a little earlier. So I'm just playing it safe. So first, we must remove the arm. Basically, we need to force remove it. There isn't any other way. Okay, we removed it, the arm. And then we slightly remove the shoulder piece from the little circle inside. Just like so and then take the new shoulder piece and pop it inside just like that and then put back the arms the joint stick it in and that's how you put the shoulder on and you do the same for the other side And then you equip the Gatlings by putting where the Vesper was. And finally put back the head. And then the backpack to lock it back in place. And you're done. Now for this MSV shoulder, you can see that those heat fins that's sticking out, just like the original F91 shoulder, these fins right here cannot be adjusted they are stationary and you cannot contract them so don't even try because you'll actually damage it now the gimmicks on the shoulder is just like the normal shoulder this one can flip open and also on the top you can actually open up just like this and the same goes for the other side and as for the back this weapon here can be act just like the normal Vesper where it can slide down from the back all the way down to the waist. Obviously as you know when we put these together, the Gatling can be detached from the missile launcher. So they can become two separate weapons. As for the missile launchers, you can place it back in by sliding it forward and combining them. So for the missile launcher, we can place it back on to the back. As for the Gatling piece, you can pull out the handle from the side right here, all the way out, and it will pop out like this. And then as for the barrel, you can pull it out to extend it, 
and if you can find it on the side there's actually this little trigger that you can pull forward so that the barrel can stick out like that and you can see the barrel tip comes out and you can pull it out a little bit more so that it's more apparent so finally it will look like this Moving on is the base of the display stand, which you can see the background is white and you can see the F91 shadow right there on the left. And then for the text, it's very simple. You got the red lines on the top and bottom, followed by Formula Project F91 in blue and then Gundam F91 in red, just like that. Very simple design and I actually like the F91 shadow on the left. That's very nicely done. I actually like it a lot but I was hoping they would actually put a little more design on the text itself. So the text part, it's a little bit disappointing. In conclusion, what do I think about this piece? Now this piece, 90% of it is actually the same as the previous version, which means all the gimmicks and all the accessories, components, they're all the same. So this piece is actually really fun. You have the base form F91 with the two Vesper on the back, and then you have the twin Vesper backpack from the MSV option set, as well as the new shoulder and the Gatling and missile launcher that you can replace it. So lots of accessories and components that you can play around with. Aside from that, they actually improved a bit on some of the components. For example, all the joints are now very tight so you don't have to be worried about the joints being loose anytime soon unless you're actually messing around quite a bit with the joints. As for the antenna and also the shield unit, those, the little holes, are actually pretty small and you might have some difficulties putting it on. But if you actually put it on, it actually sticks on pretty tightly. So you don't have to worry about it falling off. But for the same reason, it is also why I accidentally broke one of the antenna, it's because of that. You see, the holes and also the antenna are actually barely fitting together. And that's why when I was putting on the antenna, I used a little bit too much force and my hand slipped and broke the antenna. So for you guys, if you're putting on the antenna, just be very careful with it, otherwise you might end up like me and that's not something that we want. So the overall, there's actually improvement on this compared to the old. However, there's one major flaw in this whole entire thing is that, as you have guessed it, it's the color. Now the color white, it's absolutely horrible. Not sure why Bandai went with this decision to use this white and most of all what's frustrating is that what they show on the official Bandai site it's completely different from the actual product. So in other words it's almost as if it's like a scam and that drives me crazy on this. So for anyone who's actually buying this just to make sure that you've seen the actual product before you go buy it. It's totally different from how you imagine it. So with that, I'll actually rate this piece 83 out of 5, just because of the coloring that decreased one point. So that's it with my review video. I'll actually do a comparison video between this and also the previous version in details for each component. So be sure to check it out when it's out. And that's it with today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed it and find it useful. As always, be sure to hit that like button and also subscribe to my channel for more videos. I'll see you guys next time. Thank you for watching.